Hi, I'm Tom Anderson uh, with Word for Winners. I am so excited to say we've got a great program for you today filled with tremendous content of the Word of God. You're going to be blessed. Like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to have you be part of the family. I rewrote the sermon probably seven times this week uh, and just finished it again this morning, and uh, I'm not sure still how it's going to come out. Certainly the end of the year, the beginning of the new year, um, and then the Lord just reminded me that we have done about six months of preparation in your heart for 2023. And I said, Lord, he, he said, well, you taught them first the wisdom of God and how to start to utilize it on a daily basis. Then you took them through all of the names, my names, that they need to receive in the fullness from Jehovah Jireh, provision shall be seen, or Jehovah I, who's in the now, and we need to always receive now. Don't wait for the harvest. You receive the harvest before you see the harvest. We, we begin to receive all of the names in their fullness. We begin to live in life and life more abundant. And then this last series that we've been dealing with, really talking about the subconscious, the heart, uh, higher consciousness. Uh, there's lots of different names, and of course I use the word enlightenment, and so everybody gets shook. I think I lost 10 people off the web, but because they think that's New Age. New Age borrowed it from the Bible. Hello. It is, enlightenment simply means meant to be in light. In other words, it was designed to operate and work off from the Word of God to build a life and life more abundant. It is a tool that God has given in an earthen vessel, a treasure in an earth, earthen vessel. We talked about 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. So there's a treasure in this dirt that's part of the soul, part of the heart that has the power in the natural, connected to the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to change what is there and change it all of the old junk. Remember that we talked about 24 hours a day, you are programmed. This thing does not miss one thing from the point of conception till today, at this moment, this instant. It is still receiving every single thing in the environment and words and sound are stored in your computer. And the world has been able to so into that all of the extra hours with the exception of the half an hour you're in church. But the Word of God is so powerful that it can overcome all of the stuff that has happened and de-weed your heart, wash it in the water of the Word, and flood and fill it with the power of the Word of God so that you can live life and life more abundant. That's why his names, and that's why the wisdom, and that why we need to understand all of this, so we can utilize the tools that God has given us to live this best life on earth. We understand life in heaven is going to be great. It's awesome. But he's provided everything we need, not only to survive on this earth, but to thrive on this earth. And thrive includes health and wealth, which produces joy, peace, and favor with God and man. And the reason for that is because the only thing that pleases God is faith. And when we utilize faith, we gain the promises. When we gain the promises, God's happy with our happy. I don't know if you got that. My wife said I dress like the 50s. Y'all yeah, well. okay today? I, got my, I found a pair of bell bottoms for men. I couldn't find any platform shoes, but 
So I, I need to make this statement. Maybe this will help you. It helped me. I, I just sorted this out a couple of days ago. When I look at the Bible from cover to cover, I see the Old Testament. And I see the direct dealing of God with his children. You okay with that? And then we have what we just celebrated, Christmas. God sent his only son. And we gain something called, well, the New Testament doesn't really start until death, burial, and resurrection, but we see that word of God introduced and its power introduced in Jesus, the enlightened one, or the light of this world, or the word of God and its power. And that's the New Testament. But what we're living in today is something that Hebrew brings, chapter 4 brings out, that we are to enter into his rest. Now his rest is on the seventh day. It's the Sabbath. That's why Jesus said, I am the Sabbath. It is where we enter in and you can't have grace unless you're in the seventh day because grace was lent to cover past, present, and future so it had to be connected to the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ so we can operate in this thing or this gift called grace where the word works and we don't. We work not for salvation but to build the kingdom. Is anybody home? And so when we're in the seventh day, we can enter into the rest and no longer count on our works, but count on the works of Christ who did it all and provided it all so that by grace and faith we might receive all of the promises of God and live this thing called life and life more abundant. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Did I say it? I think I said a whole lot there. I hope you got that. I only gained nine pounds, okay, over Christmas. That's why I have a larger coat on today. Anyway, just make sure I cover all the bases on that. And so talking about the effect of the heart, the subconscious, you see what's going on in the world today? 2023, there's a lot of things that are out there. We've just gone through a couple of years of inundated with fear. And the reason we were inundated with fear was to make sure we got you out of faith, even stayed away from church. You couldn't be six feet from somebody. I don't know how dating went on during those years, but And other things. But anyway, so, but fear was introduced into the world society. And now we're geared a little bit directed towards faith, faith or fear yet today. In fact, now the fear that they're putting on you is called recession. High gas prices. Groceries. Not enough. Shelves are empty. Higher prices on fuel and gas and taxes are being raised. And we're headed for a recession. You know what a recession is? Recession is when the rich get richer at your expense because they put you in fear while they suck up your 401ks and your pensions. That's what recession is. We had it in 81, we had it in 2000, 2008, 2015. This is a little bit bigger because they got more money to suck up. But you see, in the kingdom of God, God covered this. He said that in times of famine, oh, come on, somebody. In the time of famine, that's when the kingdom prospered a hundred times. If we just, oh, I feel God on that morning. Jesus, whoo, what an anointing. Come on, 
You need to receive right now. This is the time to make money. This is the time to change something in your heart. Get poverty out. Get wealth in. That's all you can think about is prosperity. You can't think I can't afford it. You can't think the words I can't. You can't think the thoughts of loss. You've got to start thinking gain. God has increase on his mind for you and me. Somebody has got to get this. That's why we are reprogramming our hearts with the Word of God. This just came to me on a very big picture. Because you all know I talk about education from time to time. And I don't try to put down teachers or the system. I, that's not my heart. But I, I grasped and understood something at a deeper depth than I ever have of what has happened in the last 40, 50 years. Our education has suddenly taught the last three generations, four generations maybe, you can't. It has taught you to seek security and comfort. And those are two contrary to the word principles. They are contrary to the word principles. The principles are all about increase. They're all about risk. Abraham, leave your home. Leave your country. Leave your family. Leave. You know, that's all about what? Risk? You want me to do what? When God said to us, move to Wisconsin, I was making good money. I was buying and selling cars. I had my life, had a home. I... What? What am I going to do when I get there? I don't have a job. But my whole life, from the time Maureen and I got born again, we've done one thing, and that is follow the Holy Spirit. You see, right now, we're in a third phase. I call it the phase of rest in his word. But the third phase is where everything operates by our helper, our counselor, our Holy Spirit, who will lead us to life and life more abundant because he will lead us to the power of the word that is stored in your heart. He'll lead you to the principles of what's stored in your heart. That's why I'm hitting on truth so hard. Because truth is the word, and the word is truth. And the Holy Spirit only leads us to truth, and Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on, somebody. Truth, see, in every human being born on this earth, there's something put in us that constantly seeks truth. I bet you didn't know that. It's in you to seek truth. That's the reason if you see a sign on a, and it says wet paint, what do you do? I want to see if that's true. <laughs> Come on. It, it, it's, it's innate and we seek absolute truth. And so what has come against truth is they have slowly, instead of teaching you, you can, like the little steam engine. I remember that in first grade and second grade. I think I can. I think I can. I think we studied that, I think I can, I think I can, until I know I can, I know I can, and finally he made it up the hole, I knew I could. I... Do you know what kind of programming that is for your heart? Instead of having you can't, let the government do it, 
we'll help you. You're not smart enough. You're too dumb. You can't accomplish it. The devil is constantly lying to you and trying to steal the truth. God has increase on his line for you. God wants you blessed. It's the first thing he did. But because we have so much of the world crap stored in this subconscious part of our hearts, God's been trying to say, you got to get more word. You got to receive and believe. You got to hear truth, grasp truth, and never let truth go. You have, truth is connected and faith is directly connected to the love of God. In the names I taught this, that it, it is in order to truly abide with the Father, we need hope, faith, and love. And if there's anything, which, no, those are the truth. If there's anything they're coming against in truth, is that we're seeing a world filled with hate. We're seeing a world, they're spinning instead of life, they are taking life, destroying life. You see it on everywhere. Just three police officers in Times Square were knifed this past week. We used to love to go to New York and see the Christmas tree light and light up and, and walk the streets of Fifth Avenue. You couldn't afford what was there, but we could have, but didn't spend it. It was too high, high price. Are you here? You can't do that anymore. The world is full of kill, steal, and destroy today because they have been spinning the truth away from hope, faith, and love to kill, steal, and destroy. You can see it at every level. If you don't see it, then you're absolutely either dense or blind because it's everywhere. But in the kingdom of God, which is where we're supposed to be living, not living in the world, but living according to the principles and the kingdom of God. You will never lack. You will never lose. You will always win. God has health and wealth and joy and peace and all of his goodness stored up for every single one that would flood and fill his heart with the word of God so the Holy Spirit has something to work with. Power of confessing the word. Instead of confessing the world. Confessing the world is I can't. They do everything they can to steal your security so that you can depend on the government. They do everything they can to steal your responsibility for life. God gives you and me full responsibility for our lives. We want to transfer it to somebody else. Not my fault. Devil did it. My wife. It was my father. It was my... No, you are held accountable for your life. And the Word of God has the ability to change anything that's out of order and put it into order. If you're confused about your gender, God can help you. If you're confused about your sexuality... God can help you. If you're confused about life, God can help you. The Word was designed to fulfill and give life and life more abundant. They're trying to turn everything that God did, all of His truth, into a lie. I've said it to you a hundred times. Truth speaks hate to those who hate truth. Think about it. It's a powerful, powerful statement. Y'all okay? Here we are going into 
2023. Oh, they're talking about recession, all this stuff. But my Bible talks about abundance. If we are actually believing and trusting in what this book says, then you uh, already believe that if you died today and you're born again, you would end up in the presence of God. That means that you just have trusted your eternity according to the words in that book. Why do we have a hard time trusting that God would meet all of our needs? Why do we have a hard time trusting provision will be seen? Why do we have a hard time trusting God with just junk on this earth? Hello? Trusting God with our health. COVID. Watch out. Baking soda and water could have took care of it. I couldn't teach it, but I taught it years ago. Virus cannot live in an alkaline body. But if I preached it during COVID and somebody died, I would be held responsible. But I have taught it. You keep your body out of acid and you keep it alkaline, it will kill all virus in your body. Virus cannot live except in an acid body. Wonder why there are people that got the shots that keep getting COVID? Because they shot them up with a synthetic protein that creates acid in the body, blood. I really gone to meddling, I know that. But I'm just saying, truth is truth. God has provided ways for health. Not just miracles, not just healing, but how to stay healthy. And I realized yesterday afternoon that our next series is going to be Rich in health now. So get ready for this. You not only need to hear it, you need to receive it, and you need to believe it, and then you need to do it. Dr. Marina and I, when COVID hit, God said, well, my negotiation with God, I needed a new testimony for the Millionaire Series. And so I told the Lord, I need a new testimony. Mine's 10 years old. I need something new that says this is your book you wrote is true. And so he said, sell my house. My first words were, but COVID's on. Nobody will come to see it. So in the midst of COVID, we sold our house to somebody that saw it before COVID, about six months before COVID, and came to visit the house with a friend who was interested, ended up buying it during COVID. Are you here? And through a process of nine months, we joined what is now known nationwide, over 100,000 people that made a million dollars or more during COVID. I don't, I don't, I'm trying to plant some stuff in your weedy heart that you can take 2023 and rip this thing apart and gain some health and wealth, some joy, peace, and highly favored. Let's do this. Let's attack this thing. Let's not be passive. Let's not buy into the world. Oh, you can't? Oh, yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And you got a helper called the Holy Ghost, and he led us in every single 
spy of every house. We got the anointing over and made Lazama and sold the second house in Goba. Hello. I am not bragging. I am bragging on God because I couldn't do it, but the Holy Ghost said I could do it, and I believed in my heart that I can do, and I really believe this, all things through Christ who strengthens me. I believe that. That is planted in my heart, and I can't doubt that. Mm. I really messed up, but here's what I want to do. In this year, we were, the first 12 weeks of this year, Dr. Moraine is going to teach some of it, and I'm going to teach on it, but it's called Rich Now and Healthy Now. So we're going to cover a lot of stuff. So I want you to consider bringing a notepad, I want you to consider picking up the CDs, if we still do them, I don't know, or at least listening to them again and again on YouTube. Yes? On YouTube. Because it has to get not only understand what we talk about, wisdom of God, proper use of resource, utilizing the Holy Spirit to discern a, a good a good buy and a bad buy, or a good thing and a bad thing. You're going to start utilizing the Holy Ghost and submit to the Word of God that by His stripes you are healed. We're going to, that's perceiving. And then we're going to get a hold of concerning and become more concerned about somebody else than just, oh me, poor me, and oh poor me. Every time you do poor me, you just accepted a victim mentality. When you accepted a victim mentality, you will not receive anything good from God. Jesus never cried on the way to the cross, he was silent. He never accepted victim. You can't. Oh, why did this happen to me? Or well, how did this happen to me? Or why did this happen? Shut up. Quit that. Someday you may understand, but right now you don't want to go there. You want to stay in an aggressive position and believe the Word of God and overcome. Just what my, Dr. Maureen stood right here and said this morning. Jesus already conquered it. You're not liking today, but tomorrow can be great. Come on, somebody. All about what's in this content and allowing the Holy Spirit to de-weed the junk and put the right stuff in and lead you to truth. Do not modify the truth. Don't accept the half truths. Don't go down the mistruths. Because wait, I gotta read two scriptures. I got 42 seconds. Two scriptures. Because I got, I don't I don't know. I think I just started talking. Or did I start preaching? Anybody here? Open your Bibles up to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Am I right? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1. Now listen close. This is the whole story. That the Lord God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, or the Father of purpose or direction, may give to you the spirit of... Somebody reading? Spirit of wisdom we've been talking about. And revelation and knowledge of him. That's all his names. That the eyes. We've been talking about understanding. You know that's what I preach. The eyes of your understanding. Being. <clears throat> somebody help me with the next word. <clears throat> Enlightened. Oh my gosh. It's in the Bible. Oh. Shoot. I thought that was only a new age thing. Understanding, being enlightened, what? That you may know what the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his purpose, of his inheritance, of his promises to the saints, and what is exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. 
I don't know if you're getting this. According to the working of his mighty power by the Holy Spirit, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. How did that happen? That's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and can quicken your mortal body. I don't know if you've got that. This is dealing with this part of your heart that we get it reprogrammed that you can't think anything but wealth. You can't think anything but health. You can't say anything but wealth. You can't say anything but health. You can't say, I can't. You can only say, I can in Christ. And when you can do that, you will. If you got anything out of that, give the Lord a hand clap. I'm going to quit. I'm out of time. Thank you, Father God. I believe, Father God, that you're going to help us in 23. How many are going to commit themselves to health and wealth in 23? Stand up. We're going to pray. We're going to mandate. You say, well, I'm too old. I'm on limited income. Shut up. I can teach you how to multiply $5 until you're wealthy in less than three years. With five bucks. I got somebody that's proven it right now. I gave him a hundred dollar bill about just about two years ago. He now owns two condos with that. He'll be flipping them here shortly and making more on his way to a million. Come on. <laughs> We're writing a book around it. So, Father God, I give you praise and I give you glory. Thank you for the hearts that stood. But, Lord, it isn't enough to just hear. We must believe. We must receive. And then we must do. So I pray for every heart to receive that in Jesus' name. That this 23 is a year of turnaround. This is a year of prosperity. This is a year of health. This is a year of strength. This is a year of power of the Holy Spirit working in every single person. If you haven't received Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. I did this at 27 years old, and God has guided my life into wealth, into health, into joy, into peace, into favor. He's led my life into the goodness of the truth of the Word of God. This is not about religion. I'd like for you to become part of the family of God. Just receive Christ today. Don't listen. This is something so simple that it'll happen simply by repeating this prayer after me. Watch and watch what happens to your life. Just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. And I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. And watch your life change.